television. And uh, most recently, he was on the Dolly Parton Christmas special. And before we begin, oh, let me uh, wish everybody Happy Hanukkah, which started yesterday. Uh, Merry Christmas and Happy Holidays to whatever holiday you may celebrate to all who are viewing us this evening. Yay. Why don't we start with the ladies first, Brian, uh, and with Peggy, if you don't mind. Sure. Peggy, tell, Peggy, tell us what you're up to these days. Oh, believe it or not, in uh, King Cake before January 6th, I do have to work, work about, um, on cars because we do that big, big broadcast, uh, Mardi Gras night. But um, in the last few months, is something you can go to the WYS YouTube uh, page, cast. And so this, this month, we've got, got, of course, you know, Christmas in New Orleans documentary is airing a lot about the history of Christmas in New Orleans, which I know will, but uh, it's been great fun. And let me just, and I know Jay, you and I is very close, de near and dear to us. My father-in-law was the manager of City Park Christmas. Correct. So he's up in heaven and looking down and thrilled. And I just want to thank you you for all your hard work and I, i'm proud to say that i'm now and i look forward to being more involved fantastic brian what you doing oh nothing no <laughs> um we're, uh, <laughs> we're uh we're we're busy right now i mean if i'm not if i'm not filming or on stage um i'm at our shop hazelnut on magazine street rapid packages sweeping floors there's that plug we knew it was coming people I am. I'm listen. I'm Porter with a mop and and, and wrap chicken. You name it. Um, but you know, because retail this time of year. Uh, but there's a couple little independent films that I've done, and one just got picked up uh, that's going to be distributed. I'm excited about that called Pinball, and um, uh, the Dolly Parton movie, Dolly Parton's Mountain Magic Christmas, is airing again on NBC, the oh, 23rd of December, and you can stream it. I think on Peacock. Um, and it, it was kind of funny because, uh, you know, some of my funny lines got edited. Um, I'm in it, but like, I'm just, oh, there he is. There he is. Because uh, they, long story short, I broke my foot the second day of filming. And we filmed a couple of scenes the first day. And I had these orange tennis shoes, Airbirds. And then, you know, I broke my foot. And three days later, I had to film this big opening scene where we're dancing in the streets. And I, I had a boot on. Because when you wear a boot, when you have a broken foot, you really don't feel it. You can do anything, really. And But they put this big orange sock over my boot. So I look like some kind of cartoon character with this one big, huge orange foot. Um, it not highlighted. No one noticed, Brian. No one noticed. Oh. Yeah, I, actually, I'm, I'm going to play a little. Uh, I'm going to play a little video. Uh, one second. Let's see if I, if I can. One of my very, one of my lines that lasted. No, I'm kidding. It was, it was so much fun. It was my there friend David Rambo wrote it, and I played him in the movie. Here I am. There's Dolly. And there's me. That was my confirmation picture. <laughs> okay. So there it is. I just wanted to play that. I, I have one, I have one for Peggy. <laughs> so let me. Oh, okay. Me, yeah, yeah. Uh oh. So let me. This isn't. This is your and, life. No, nah, it? it's good. It's good. It's it's good. <laughs> Go ahead. Both and of you guys actually, have been... we have we have a, a comment here. Ed Weiss says a foot of many colors. Yes. Yes. <laughs> and uh, she's. You know, she she's pretty amazing. Um, she uh, she has um, she showed up. I mean, she is a work. She works so hard, and but she showed up every day or crack of dawn, all done. We never saw her in the trailer. She came to the set, and she she and funny, just innately funny. She has such a great sense of humor, and um, and she does so much good. I mean, she's given away. I think over 200 million books through her Imagination Library Foundation. Wow. And she's, she's, she's mm. yeah, she's pretty amazing. She oh, believes in, I, 
I believe, um, I don't think I'm telling tales out of school, but I think she's 76. Because she's a, still a ball of energy. Wow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And she, but she's, I mean, impressive. some of her lines, when she just is playing around, you know, between takes, some of the stuff she says, she's, she's really fun. She's, she's, she, she knows what she's doing. She's, you don't have that kind of lasting power, you know, that, that how, which she has had. And, you know, my favorite line, I think she said years ago, she goes, it takes a lot of money to look this cheap, you know? <laughs> you you know, she, uh, Brian, since we're in the Christmas mode, don't you just love, of hard candy Christmas songs and I do. version of that. Is, yeah. It's really, yeah. really, People really she wrote it a classic it though, but it was from, it was it was from No, she didn't was, write oh, it. How, but she, she performed it in her the version movie. of it is and I just think that was really now I I, I I Jay, I don't know if you know this, but our grandmother took me to see Best Which one? House in Texas. M Mui. Which one? Uh, our okay. mother is Mui. Um, Mac yeah. she took me to go see the best little horror house in Texas. Mom had gotten all the tickets for the shows, and my grandmother didn't, you know, she was my mom could go because our father was ill at the time. Yeah. So she took me to New York, and we're walking up to the marquee. And she goes, What kind of show are we about to see? Well, <laughs> she ended up loving it. it you must have been a sophomore, show. Brian. Sophomore is junior year for you, I think junior, I think junior year in high school. You, you're not going to believe this. You know who I saw it with in New York? Who? I was at Lawrenceville, and he was at Princeton. I went with Michael Lewis. We took the uh, Amtrak in from Princeton, and we uh, saw it with her. Uh, and it was oh, spectacular. It's uh, great. It's such a great, great show. And my favorite thing about it was um, when my grandmother sat there, she was okay, if this is a little too dirty, we're going to leave. I'm like, well, the opening <laughs> numbers are something. But her, she watched, I can't remember what soap opera she watched, but the guy who played the sheriff, was the um as the, the world movie. turns Brian. as the world turns he was on he was on in, in that in that in the show and she was on the show he plays such a nice man but this sheriff is saying some <laughs> dirty words and like oh god you know that's my grandmother that wore gloves to the theater so you know Stephen Peggy <laughs> Peggy knows our family pretty well on both sides mm -hmm. but it's you know Errol her husband he had told me or my mom had told me they danced together back at City Park years ago at some of the things. And there's a picture or two of them in the, uh, at Ralph's Brennan's restaurant. Ralph's on the park, right? So they, 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 yeah. uh, so, uh, the, dan the, a, the Hazel the, Nuss Dancing hot... School, apparently one night over recitals up on Tagore I mean, Stadium. And I'm, I'm telling you all, so I'm preaching to the choir. There was a bride and a groom, and I think maybe it was an altar boy. Anyway, Eric and helping out with the Hazelnut School for the recital one time. And it was, but I remember going to the, let me just say this, on Sunday nights, hey, you know, nothing to do, you'd go to Tag Gormley on a Sunday night and go see the recitals. It was great fun. Mm -hmm. Wow. That sounds like fun. What do you and Errol have? Yeah, Peggy, what are you and Errol planning to do for the holidays? You're, you're right on the cusp of them. <laughs> no, it's all, it's really all about family because I have um, a niece in the Navy, and mm -hmm. so they are in Norfolk and they have two little ones. And so they're going to come in. I'm going to, we're going to my sister's house and we're all getting together. That's, I mean, to me, that's the most important thing. Go to New York about a week and a half ago. Because I had to get my New York fix. I know, on, but we hadn't been since 2019. And, and I'm a Broadway baby. <laughs> Finally, yeah. right before it closed, it was Hugh Jackman and the Music Man. Right. Uh, oh, you saw of course, in, yeah, yeah, and, and he, they closed in mid-January now. They're finally oh, wow. going to close. To see, I, I went to the Met for the first, the Metropolitan Opera, the Met Opera. And we saw wonderful about that is, of course, there's the carnival connection because mm -hmm. the grammar for you may sound familiar. Da, 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 da. Aida. And every ball is the grand yeah. march from Aida. And we got to see that. Now, in, and then in, we in, went to Carnegie Hall. Oh, huh? really? What? I'm sorry. And we saw a Judy. Uh huh. 
No, 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 no. I, but I want to, is in that part of Aida, isn't that when all the animals are, are being paraded across? Yes. You chose that I mean, song. we were just <laughs> flipping. With the camels and all the animals going the across. Where the dirty pumps are going, yeah. Like, interesting choice. But so what else do you see? The horses circled around, and we saw them twice. <laughs> using the horses. <laughs> But what did you see at Carnegie Hall? Which was so much fun. Carnegie Hall, the Judy Garland Centennial Tribute. That was a while because wow. they had clips lived of a, a TV show. And mm -hmm. so they would show those. And then a woman named Judy, who was wonderful, she was Elphaba in, um, in, in some productions of Wicked, sang. And she didn't say, hey, I'm pretending to be Judy. But she certainly had a similar voice. Nobody Wow. 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 We, so um, we actually have a comment here. It uh, says, you said dancing school made me think of Miggy's. I went to Miggy's. Oh, I went to Miggy's. With get get on the, uh, the, uh, the uh, streetcar and go, uh, go go to the river band from Newman and then learn. Right next to that shell station, right on the right, right. On where the river bed is. Jay and I already knew. The dances. I mean, we would like as kids learn how to like to waltz, box trot, cha -cha. cha cha. Oh yeah. I knew I knew the cha cha when I was you know five. You know, but <laughs> did you back really? to New York? I yes, did. we, we did. Totally. That's your mom. Huh? We did. Like your mom. Cha cha chase. Leslie and and our grandmother. Out. Yes. When if Leslie, oh, yes. Leslie can say the cha cha chase, where you cha cha and then you start turning and, and you tap the one on the shoulder and you pivot and it's like you're chasing each other, but you don't. You can't. It's it's. We'll do it for you one day, but I could do, I could still do that in my sleep, sadly. Right? It's yes. Fun. The cha cha chase. But um, uh, when I was in New York, I, I last time before, I got to see Wendell Pierce um, oh. as Willie Logan, oh. in Death of a Salesman, and he was earth shatteringly brilliant. I mean, it was just he made Willie Loman really likable. Even though you know the man's troubled, and you know he has all these false values, you know he believes, you know, and uh, and he, you know he you feel for him because he he's losing it, he, and now just knowing more about you know dementia and all these other you know problems to watch this man who you know just it, it, he was he gave it, it, it he's going to win he must win the Tony Award for Best Actor I think because he won the Olivier in London for it but he he gives it. And he has a good old New Orleans boy. So it's, you know, it's it's great. And we, we talked afterwards. Voice. Don't you buy that deep, deep voice? He's got a oh, yeah. great voice. So I don't know how he does voice. that eight shows a week. Because, I mean, singing in a Broadway show is also taxing. Because I've, I've done that too. Eight shows a week. Yeah. It's hard. But he, they are like, they are some fierce, guttural, you know, scenes where they are just ah, at each other. And um, I'm like, you got to place that correctly because you can't do that eight shows a week and not lose your voice. But he what, he, kind of, he, what kind of competition will he be facing for the Tony guys? You know, who knows what's going to open up in in there's there's some other great plays right now. Top Dog, Underdog, the revival of that on Broadway, uh, the Piano Lesson um, with um, Samuel Jackson. Mm -hmm. uh, there's there's some there's some there's always some competition. Competition. There's always some Brit that comes in and everybody goes, ooh, you know, but, you know, it's like one of my friends said, like, yeah, if it's a Brit that comes in, they're going to win. But I, I think, I think Wendell's going to, he must take it. It'll be so I great to so. see. Yeah. So we have a post here from Sue Vaccaro. I'm sorry. We have a post here from Sue Vaccaro. Oh, Sue. Uh -huh. Wendell is fabulous. I hey, agree. Sue. He should get a Tony for it. Hey, Sue. Sue Jay, you know Sue. You've met Sue, my friend Sue Vaccaro. Because uh, I know he's Sue. on Broadway and she's funny. Yes, I know. Yeah. Sue. <laughs> I really hope he does. I mean, you know, he deserves it. And he's a nice guy. He's a good, nice guy. So what's going on, Peggy? You were talking about, we, I mentioned yes. WYS. Tell us what's going on with WYS right now, please. Well, we've got a lot of uh, pretty good things so, you know, we just did um, about Dr. Norman Francis, right. which I thought, you know, went very well. And, um, and uh, I mean, it was quite a team effort, but they did a great job. 
oh, the state uh, uh, a Suncoast Emmy Award for the documentary um, on, uh, of course, so that we got some really good news about that. So Very we're nice. really excited about that. I am going to be a doc documentary on literary New Orleans, Brian. Uh, <laughs> and imagine who that might include maybe somebody named Tennessee Williams but anyway um, um, to do for a long time and unfortunately we, we just lost Dr. Dr. Kenneth Holditch who yes. as it turns, oh. turns out though I did interview him in the more recent past I mean I already knew that those interviews were gold but I'm very sorry that he has passed because he, he's a lot to highlighting the importance the connection between Williams in New Orleans. Everybody knows a streetcar named Desire. But as Brian will attest to, having done a splendid show fired by Mr. Williams in, in his, his words, um, you know, I I don't think as, as the, it, how much he loved New Orleans. He, he called it the frontier of Bohemia. He felt at home here. He, he lived here off and on. And I, and I, once again, I feel like I'm preaching to the choir about this. But I, I look forward. It won't just be about Tennessee Williams. It'll be about the literary, and you know, and other writers who are, are well known and not so well known. But the city is so Tennessee Williams Festival and other other events, of course. You know, to have this rich, rich literary, we're gonna, we're gonna focus on that. So oh, very nice. Great. I, I was. You might have heard me mention earlier who I went to go see uh, the uh, Dolly Parton show. Uh, earlier was Michael Lewis. Uh, he might be yes. able to add to that. Michael has been at, at Tennessee Williams Festival as his dear Brian uh, many, yeah. many, many times. Uh, and, and, you know, this is so New Orleans. I know Michael's mom, just like I knew y'all's mama. Yeah. <laughs> Michael, <laughs> Diana Lewis. You know, you can right. see yes. what is it the trade. She was, in, and of course, you know, their dad, his dad. But, uh, but it is such a civic activist, you know? And so to see Michael come, come along, well, why, why am I not surprised? Even though we have to give him a, a lot of credit. Well, they have so many people to choose from that have come from this market. Ellen Gilchrist, a, uh, oh, love she, Pierre Walker's uh, oh. mom, who's yeah. spectacular. I love and her just, work. I love there's her. so much talent here and it just runs over and over. Oh my gosh, yeah. And Nancy Lemon, I loved her. What was it Lives of the Saints? Right. I love that book. And you, Brian, of course. Yeah. What's that? You, of course. Oh, I just, you're I just. An have author. To read, so you're an author. I'm an author. <laughs> I got, I got, I got one brewing in me now. So who knows? You know. Oh, good. Well, you book. know, your your incredible book about your, your mom, and, and to have not read it, would you please give the, the title? Because it's one of to me the best titles of a book ever. She ain't heavy. She's my mother. <laughs> the, title of it. the one I'm working on now is entitled "That Which Does Not Kill Me Makes Me Bitter." <laughs> that's, that's the name. Yes, indeed. So we'll hear. I love it. Yeah, I'm gonna uh, quickly. Uh, I'm gonna quickly play something if you don't mind. Uh, let's see. Let me go ahead. Well, in Steve, uh, uh, if you have, uh, can let me know where we can talk. Well, okay, these two guys. Oh, here okay. Oh, oh, here we go. <laughs> oh. Well, this is Christmas in New Orleans. Yes. Mr. Bengal. Wow. A, a certain documentary that airs on. There she Friday, is. Yes. <laughs> and I'm proud to say there's a. Also, a book uh, called Christmas yes. from McGill of the Historic New Orleans ah, Look who it is. Deacon John. Deacon. Did, um, about that? But uh, I have to say, you know, you know, sometimes people say, and I'm sure they ask you this, Brian, about what's your favorite play, what's your favorite documentary? That's a very hard question to answer. But if I have mm -hmm. press, this is New Orleans, because that was the documentary that was supposed to air, and we all have stories. 2000 and five oh, and we know what wow. happened and especially wow. so it did not 2006 and and 
WYES, as many of you all know, is in Lakeview. So, so it took us a while to get back up, and uh, but we did. And I had a question for Brian, for, for um, of course, uh, for Brian and Jay. Is your your amazing mom and grandma and your dad, of course, too? But tell me about Christmas. At, like, did you all decorate a lot? lot? I mean, oh I'd like God. to hear about that. Jay? Ryan, uh, I'm, I'm going to talk about my Christmas Adam that I came up with. Yes. All right. So years okay. ago, my grandmother on my mother's side, Mui, that Brian referred to earlier, uh, the, the grandchildren were going to their respective boyfriend and girlfriend's houses, and we're not, we're not showing up for Christmas Eve at our grandmother's house. Wait, she also, lived as went on, everyone, they got married, and people had other oh, children, yeah. and Mui got older. Conflict, and, conflicts. Yeah. Right. But this was uh, this came about. She, she was living at forty two hundred St. Charles, Caddy Corner from Stephen and Martin's, uh, on the parade route, which was a great place to go hang out. Anyway, uh, she tasked me with finding a way to get everybody there, and I did. Came up with Christmas Adam, which is the twenty third of December, Adam and Eve, Christmas Eve being the twenty fourth. Oh, and, and I've been pushing that. And I've been pushing that on Scoot. I've talked to Scoot about it. David Tyree. Everybody, I bring it up at council meetings. I bring it up on Facebook, and it will never catch on. I thought it was going to be a winner. I thought the 23rd could have been a national holiday. Believe you know, it, or a holiday. Someone, someone else, I, I was in, where was I? I? I think it was in New York, someone we were talking about. And someone said, we, wait, we do the same thing. Now, I don't know if they've read the book or heard about it from you or whatever, but it was unrelated. And they said, oh, we, we have a Christmas Adam. So, I, only came up, I was 13 or 14 when I came up with the idea. So that's like mm -hmm. 45, 50 years ago. So anyway, that's fun. And then Brian's going to tell you about how some of the men that used to work at Pontchartrain Beach, before there was an Al Copeland, built a winter wonderland at our house with moving oh, elves, okay. cutting things. Go ahead, tell him, Brian. I can't remember his name. He was a German artist that would paint a lot. Henri Pohl. Henri Pohl, yes. Maybe yes. Right. I can't remember. Um, no, you had him right the first time. Mr. Chairman, he did these great cutouts, and they painted these elves and Santas and everything in our yard, and it was just fantastic. But it was it wasn't too over the top. It was these, these vintage looking, you know, artistic, uh, beautiful, you know. And but Mom loved to decorate for Christmas. I inherited that from her. That's why I think we have, you know, we go crazy at store for Christmas. But he would, uh, there would be several trees, you know, in the living room, a tree in the, in the and den. One flocked, one green, remember? One green, and then we get a tree in our, our little bed. It was, it was fun. We, it was definitely celebrated. Uh, you know, I remember one time there was this Anna Lee was a big thing in the 70s. There were these felt doll characters, and they're painted and everything. And they, I think they were D.H. Holmes, and they were a little expensive. And moms, at, we're going to get them because we'll use them every year. And we did. And they were beautiful because, of course, I went crazy for them. And then friends of ours, these younger friends, the graphs came over. And, and, and I can't remember how my father was complaining about, of course, how much it cost. And they go, we'll come over and dress up as Santa and Mrs. Santa and stay in your living room for that. You know, it was kind of funny. One of the but, questions, y'all, is on Rail Street. Was this on Rail Street? Yes. Yes, on Rail Street. When this was Definitely. Happening. Okay, I see the question. Oh, yeah. Okay. But, okay. But, um, you know what? I, I'm gonna, I've got, I have to plug two things, if that's okay. Um, tomorrow night at Orpheum, um, um, for many years I've done um, Judith Owen and um, uh, Harry Shearer's Christmas Without Tears. And uh, there are a lot of performances, and it's fun. And I'm doing that tomorrow night at the Orpheum. And then the next night, uh, I'm, I'm going to be at Le Petit with the Skivvies. And it's a group out of New York, and they perform. All the Broadway people do it at uh, uh, Fifty Four Below. I mean, everyone does it, and I've not been in. Well, I'm a little old. When they called, I said, "I'm a little old and I'm out of shape to do the skibbies because some people come out in their underwear. They wear the band is underwear the whole time, and some people do a little thing where they take off. Well, you know, some of these Broadway dancers are in incredible shape, right? I said, if you would have called thirty years ago, I would have been fine. But I said, I. I, I'm a little too old and out of shape with this. No, no, you don't have to take anything off. So I, I called my friend Kathleen Motley on, who's also a Broadway performer who lives here now. 
with her family. And um, she said, I said, are you, did they call you? She goes, yep, they called me. I said, I told them I'm only doing it if you doing it. And um, <laughs> I said, I said, we are so eighth grade right now. Like, I'll, I'll do it if you do it. So we said, <laughs> we'll do it. We're not <laughs> off. So it's going to be fun. It's a little risky. And fun, but, you know, the robe will stay on, I promise you. Yeah. Well, I noticed one of the questions or one of the references was, and, and of course, I have to share a little bit of personal history on that because my mom was Holmes's and I worked my way through college at Holmes's. So I was actually, you know, relief help. And so, so if somebody didn't, you know, wasn't able to come to work that day, I'd be in Muscle Stover Candy, wherever oh. men. Furnishings, wherever wow, they Christmas you have to go around hard. So you much have to fun. Do the merchandise and, 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 and be able to take care of people. Well, I guess it was, I don't know, most, most of the cash sales, I guess, then checks and maybe. Well, yeah. Uh, the um, New yeah, Orleans yeah, shopper card. What? I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, the New Orleans shopper card. Uh, well, I, yes, Mr. Remember Ball, that? Yes, absolutely. Uh, but what was fun is, you know, when and ask, like, can you help me find a tie for this shirt? And talk about a response. You know, suddenly I'm dressing someone and I'm trying to do my best. But <laughs> uh, yes, D.H. Holmes says, and the windows, <laughs> we cannot, you know, I'll have to talk about the windows of D.H. Holmes, having mm -hmm. done the documentary in which I really studied the, they were magical. apparently the budget, it was the sky's the limit. There was no budget. There was and those windows and Dickie Roussel, who was the head of as they as they say that term display, would get to go shopping in Europe and buy these mechanics and they would put them in the window. I now, love of course, that. Not to be outdone by Mr. Bingle, but but uh, but we cannot forget D. H. Holmes's. Oh no, no, the windows. I mean, like it, it's a lost art um, of those gorgeous Christmas windows. You don't see them anymore. I've been even I've been in begging. New York. They stopped that, Brian. Um, Saks still does it. Lord and Taylor. Yes, I, I think saw it closed. the Saks. Yeah. Macy's does a little bit, but I, I also love Bergdorf's windows. They're very artistic and out there, sure. but they're not. They're not the old-fashioned thing with the little, you know, like when we stuff. were kids. Yeah. Yeah. But you know, I I will say this. I was just in London, and the lights in London for Christmas and how they do it—it's it, just breathtaking. Across Regent and and Piccadilly, these huge uh, lit up angels of, of just lights, and all the way down, it's 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 breathtaking. Um, Paris was okay, but it can't compare to London. And and you know, I, I was like really blown away. I was like, wow, they're doing it up. You know, Paris it's, it's, okay compared to London. Wow. Well, city for for the lights for for, for the, the decoration. I know, but Paris is a city of lights. That's what made me. I went, wow. Think, well, okay. they, you know, they yeah. do have that thing called the Eiffel Tower. Yeah, it's constantly when it lights up. Exactly. But you, you would think, but London, there was something about it that, and it was all angels and lights, and it was it, it was it was really breathtaking. It was really really special. So, so yeah, well, I've, you know, I've, 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 I want to. I've got to a talk post for y'all. Let's talk. Okay, Steve and Jay and okay. Yeah, um, so here, I, I mean, I I know, do you all remember the window? I am, but the, the the wonderful shows of Mr. Bingle with ice ice absolutely. Front, you know, on Canal Street, it was un unbelievable. And then he had us on a little TV, Mr. Bingle on TV every day, weekday, right. talking about the great toys that and Mr. And for Bingo. those who are not familiar. with with Mr. Bingle, he was the mascot starting in 19. Um, and uh, Emil Eileen, uh, he was the head of that at Maison Blanche, was inspired. He went to one of those shows where all the displayed and they exchange ideas. And Rudolph was Montgomery Ward's mascot, no reindeer. And so he, he got the idea of a little snowman, which is so funny. Funny, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, really. MB, Mr. Bingle. <laughs> but I read a wonderful <laughs> story on um, about the history of Rudolph, and it was um, it was about the, the gentleman who wrote it. The, the it, was, it was sad, sort of 
mother, well, the wife was dying and the child, and he wrote this story about Rudolph for him, for the child, and and he was really not, not he was like very poor, and it, it, it they he gave it out to everyone at the at Montgomery Ward, I think it was, and or or the publisher, and it it, 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 it everyone loved it, and it became uh it, it you know they were quite well off after that uh oh, oh, oh that, i didn't it, it, not know that yeah, if you look at the screen you see the picture of dh holmes during christmas oh yeah there were oh. i remember also dh holmes growing up with the bells they had those bells all in the front that would yes swing and move i love that but I, earlier I, I they that. would actually have santa on the balcony i i don't don't. Yes, but Santa I have an old way to the passers by. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh wow. You know, it's it's you know, it's just I, I, I miss that. I miss all that glamour for Christmas. Well, besides that, yeah. the glamour. Remember going into D. H. Holmes and the candy bar that they had there with the candied orange peels and the chocolate yes. covered cherries hey, and Jay, you buy chocolate by the pound. Make their own candy. Right, yeah, they made and their it own was candy. spectacular. They made it? Uh, they had a Russell yeah. Silver counter, but they also made their own wow. candy. And it was like an entire counter. I mean, it was huge that you could go up and you, they'd sell it by the quarter pound, half pound, whole pound. Back when one apartment store used to carry those types of things and you didn't have to go to a specialty place to get chocolate and another store to get yes. this. They had it everything. And they would go I'll throughout the that. world to find these things and bring them back to New Orleans yeah. because back then the city was... It was a pearl of the South. I mean, everybody came here to shop too. Yeah, there's the bells. So here's, here's, here's another oh, picture, by go. the way. Thank there you, the Steve. Bell. That's the great. Bells. Yeah. yeah. Well, oh, you know okay. what was? I worked there and spent so much time there. I can even to this day tell you where every apartment was. Candy was on the first floor, mm -hmm. and it was towards the back on the right. Okay, I'm sure in Canal Street. Was it near okay. the Potpourri restaurant? And it, we, we like the potpourri and the chicken huh? salad salad. The, the potpourri chicken salad. Yes. And was it the do you remember the scale? Yes, no, it was. There used I, I, to be a scale. It was a scale rendezvous room, right? Who would want to weigh themselves I was going into the restaurant? Oh, right. the big, huge scale. Right, right. I forgot about that. I remember, I look, I, I, was, I was always into fashion and all that stuff. And I remember going up with my mom to go shop. If we were shopping and they, they were having a Jeffrey Dean. Um, trunk show and jeffrey Ooh. bean is one of a very famous designer who's actually from louisiana yeah. who went to tulane who was an architecture school and decided to become um uh wanted to be a fashion designer and look what happened but he was revolutionary at his time and i remember looking at this stuff going mom this is fantastic and she goes not for me <laughs> yeah it wasn't it was you know it's known for its no it's return Turn policy. They would take anything back. That was with D.H. Holmes. They did. They said they would take anything back, and they and they and they actually. I have to tell you how much money I made per hour as a flyer. A dollar Go sixty. Ahead. Oh my! A dollar sixty. <laughs> well, a dollar sixty make... then, sort of. <laughs> so we have a post here, uh, Peggy. Says hi, Peggy. It's the Mad Dog's yeah, oldest daughter here. <laughs> Big hi and hugs to oh, all from Houston. No windows that. here. I miss oh. old Nola Sanger, oh. MB, Godchars, Holmes, and it was a rendezvous room, wasn't it? In Holmes, not corporate room. Uh, 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 no, the rendezvous room was at Miss Maison Blanche. They Maison had Blanche. the rendezvous. Oh. Okay. And, and Holmes had it was called the DH Holmes Restaurant. That yeah. uh, marble counter, this chicken salad, old timey yeah. marble counter. Yeah. Yes. And the and the chicken salad. I mean, it was it was pretty chicken was pretty salad. Wonderful. And With the grapes. Chicken and salad. Sesame seed dressing. Yes. 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 Before. Oh my goodness! You remember that, Jeff? <laughs> I don't know where that came from, Peg. It came out of my hip pocket. But well, I know. It, How, it, it, and Godshaw's across the you know across the street was yeah. always so great and chic and. Well, and and then also Gus Meyer. Chic, Ryan, chic. Chic, it was. That's where that's where I had to go get suits in the husky department for myself when I was a younger boy. I was a little oh. I was a little thick. Oh. 
so they brought me to the Husky department at, at Gotcha's. I never th and I've never thought of the Husky department as chic, Brian, but maybe I just didn't see the rest of the story. Well, better dresses was chic. Okay. <laughs> well, you know, Street, that meant you were kind of more going to the more of a little bit of more of upper echelon. Right. Gotcha's were, were a kind of, I mean, they were smaller, but they were a little bit more exciting. Yeah. I remember going to Learners and uh, on the other, uh, back on the D.H. Holmes and, and made stuff in the lay layaway. Oh, my. Oh, my <laughs> layaways. Well, do, you my remember, was, um, do you have layaway at Hazel and Ryan? No. We don't. But you should put it in. <laughs> we should. Um, we have, but also remember all this, but you know what? I, I will say a little shout out to the stores that have stuck around, like Rubenstein's is still there. Yes. And Adler's yes. on Canal Street. We no. fell off crime because yes. of crime and COVID. Absolutely. Yeah, I know. You were 30 years, years. It, 30 it, years it, it, on Coronelette right there. So which building is this? That's Gotcha's. Yep. You got it. And, I think it's and now. A, a gotcha's. Uh, unfortunately, gotcha's. I think it's now. That was good. Yep. Uh, that was Gus Meyer there on the corner, wasn't it, Chuck. originally? Was it? I think that, I think no, that, that one was. was gotcha's. I know, but right down the corner was Gus Meyer, right? Yes, got some money. We had an aunt that on the uh, was, corner of Carondelet and and Canal. Yes, our right? aunt Norma was head of uh, Walgreens the, now. It's Walgreens, but it used to be beautiful. Uh, Gus Meyer. Yeah, that was a locally owned uh, business, was it not? Yes. Who owned yes. the Who owned Gus and Meyer? all the shoe stores. You had so many shoe shoe stores. Bacornis? Imperial earlier. Imperial. Yeah. Oh, yep. Yes, the men's store. We've gone into a, so a Dan a store. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, Cobbs, too. You know, that was oh. a very male oriented. When, when most of the world BD was male a, way, a, a while back, um, you had you had Pecoris, Porter, which became Porter Stevens. Right. And, and became, you know, the haberdasheries, the hatter, which is still there. That's why. Why well, that's June. there? It's very male oriented, right there. Oh yeah, I, I, I worked at Terry. Oh, and June Sears. Before. We can't forget the giant Santa. A big giant sign and Sears. Sears. Right. And Sears, yes. You know, it's, I think it's a thing nationally, worldwide. All the all the smaller, locally owned department stores, you know, or the, those kind of specialty stores have gone by the wayside. In London, Fortin and Mason is still there, but after COVID, it's still great. But like we went there because they had the best look men's accessories and stuff and tie, you know, stuff for men. And we went up trying to find, you know, the area and like, what happened to it? It's gone. They said, and we asked and they said, oh no, we don't carry men's accessories anymore. So it's like, oh my. So I was like, oh no, not you, London oh. too. But anyway. Did you go to All right, so Christmas Selfridges or Harrods? Yes, we went to Harrods, we went what? to Selfridges. We, we always go to um Harrods is changing that wonderful where all the little restaurants are and you could sit at the little counters and all that stuff. Uh, the, the, the best rotisserie chicken at the one place and all that. We went there, yeah, it was great. It was so beautiful. And saw uh, the revival of Cabaret, which was just genius. I hope it comes to the States because it was- Tell me, what, what, made the, what made the revival of Cabaret genius? Because I've seen Cabaret as well and it's a, a brilliant um, play. And yeah. if you have the right talent in it, it's a great play. But what made but this one this, over the top? Well, they, it was in a it was in a, a theater where they had taken the backstage and made more seats, so you're you're two sided looking at it, and then in the boxes on the side they had tables that were like you were in the cabaret. Cabaret. It was okay. You're very, very immersive. So when the lights came up on the tables, you were in the cabaret. When the lights went down, you were not in the cabaret, which was similar to the Alan Cumming revival, except. It, in this one, in, in the, the uh, Alan Cumming revival, at, at the end he goes to the gas chamber, and you, you know that's the. It's in this one the MC start when he sings "I Don't Care Much." He starts putting on a brown suit, and he conforms. He becomes a Nazi, and the chorus wow. become they they become part of it, and you're like, and it's it's foreshadowed earlier when they sing "Tomorrow Belongs to Me." Uh, the MC is singing it beautifully. I mean, usually MC can't sing. This MC could really sing. And the chorus, there's a revolve, right? This little turntable. 
and they put these little statues on of men, uh, boys in brown suits. And it starts to revolve like a little music box while they're singing this. And it's mirrored at the end when they're all in the brown suits following, you know, the, it, it was chilling. It was just, you know, the, it, you know, and what's going on with all this unfortunate anti-Semitism and all this crap, it really just it was, it was, it was very resounding. So I'm, I'm sorry, that was in New York or London? Not, London, I, I London. I hope London, it comes okay. to New York because it, it was, uh, yeah, it was something. It was something. And then the performances were all great. And especially, in my opinion, the heart and soul of that show is Fraulein Kost and, uh, uh, and, and uh, not Fraulein Kost, uh, <laughs> Herr Schultz and, 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 and the older woman, the older couple and the, the pineapple song and and and, the, and they get engaged and then what's going on she decides not to marry him because he's jewish and it's heartbreaking you know it's it's really you know it's it it, it and the, those those two were just so great so anyway if you go to london go see it oh it sounds it sounds it really is genius brian yeah. i just wanted to yeah. know the difference i appreciate yeah you it was yeah, well, that what we were just talking before we went on air is like it, i love seeing classic broadway plays or musicals or whatever reinterpreted and and you know uh, there was a sweeney todd that where everyone played the musical instruments um paddle pone played the tuba you know <laughs> or don't you play the tuba in one scene and try and you're like okay and it worked um, michael Servus, who lives here part-time is was in that as well and um you know i just love seeing that it's I did not realize that when you got the rights to plays that you could take that amount of artistic license to do yeah. something like that and to, and to rework it in such a way I that think creates a had, totally I different think Sondheim approved it. Yeah. Oh, you yeah, have yeah, to get approval. Okay. You have to get approval. Yeah. Um, got it. Well, okay. If you have like, if you have like, like whoever the, the new hot director, you know, in London, New York, whatever, that wants to do this and they get the names and everything and they, they, they give they, them latitude they, to do some things they, yes and, okay you know, so fine. Is, I, I, I put like, a post up of um of cabaret well, there's eddie redmayne that yeah. it? that's it that's yeah. one from london mm -hmm. that's eddie redmayne and we missed him he had left um oh okay and the um the young actress i can't remember her name now who was playing sally goals was just she's a she's an american and she was just fantastic just fantastic you know, everyone thinks well, cabaret, you, well, the song cabaret. Uh, like, Brian, you probably know that, you know, this brought a new Sweeney Todd and Marilee B. Roll on. Yes. Um, uh, yes. You know, to Josh Groban is Sweeney Todd. Oh, my. Yes. And and um, uh, my friend Lindsay Mendez is in Marilee. I was just it was on the Broadway cruise with her. Uh, and she's playing oh, and she's wow. going to be great. And Tom directed mm -hmm. that at Le Petit not too long ago. Was that I the loved, Mad Men cruise or the, or, the, uh, or the Broadway cruise? Or are there the two Broadway different cruise. Ones? The Broadway. You have Broadway. two different ones? Yeah. Oh, you're, that's you a know, nice. This is the playbill, okay. you know, the, the, uh, what you get, you know, they, they have, and it, it was beautiful. It was, listen, when they invite you on those things, you go. Oh, Peggy, you know? I'll, I'll tell you, I don't know if you know about this, but it's a racket. I mean, <laughs> Brian, it's incredible what Brian gets to do, living it's, off of the Mad Men fame and, and Broadway fame. <laughs> <laughs> Please be on our cruise. You have to do a song and sign an autograph, and you get a top state room way above water <laughs> with, with a balcony, you know, 2,000 square feet state room. And it's no, just, it's not that big. And it's Other like, room was and, much bigger. And, and Brian Her walks around, looks pretty, and sings a song, and that's it. And now he did that, that for, for Mad Men on him. cruise, it, it, and he did that for, a, a for the Broadway life. cruise. Oh, yeah. Yes, it, it, was. It, was, it was fabulous. It was like, but Tommy Toon was on it too, and Tommy and was. How's he doing? Tommy was. He's great. You know, he almost died. He had a horrible. He's about injury. eighty-five now, isn't he? No, he's in his mid seventies, so mid oh, mid to late seventies. No, but he um he he's a lovely gentleman, and I, I haven't seen him in years, right? So we get we're all in Rome. We're on the bus to go to the ship, right? And all the talent are, and he's in the back, and he's like you know eight feet tall. So we you know we're sitting. He's, he's He's just enchanting. And he said, Brian, come So I went and sat next to him. He goes, and we're talking. He goes, and I'm, I don't mean this. I'm not, this might kind of sound braggadocious and it's not. But he goes, I just, I just want to let you know, I'll, I'll never forget your performance as, as Joe Gillis in Sunset Boulevard. I came to see the show when you were on, you were the understudy. 
And I said, Tommy, I said, that is so sweet of you. That's, you know, 25 years ago or more. And I said, you, and he wrote me the sweetest note afterwards. And I went, uh, um, he's 83. Wow. Uh, thanks. So. thanks. Um, he, he is such a nice gentleman. He looks great for his age too. He's, he's also an artist, Peggy. He's an artist. Oh, yeah. I have one of his paintings. Really? Yeah. I had Butterfly. no idea. Yeah. Gee whiz. Uh, we oh, were, oh, it was well, right after the I just wanted to, to, somebody mentioned the Lillian shop. And of course, Pearl. Oh, the Lillian shop. And, on yeah. St. Charles. Yeah, yeah, the Lillian shop. Yeah. Yes. Talk about Jane a precious Howard. little shop on St. Charles Avenue for so many years. Yeah. My well, well, mother was alive and bought dresses for my daughter's hair all the time. Oh yeah. <laughs> no, no, that's, that's, well, now, that's that's not the same as Lily Pulitza, right? No, it's not. No, I no, no. Pulitza stores. <laughs> Those are some of my retail stores, Peggy. He was joking. Yeah, that's what. That's why I brought it up. Thank oh, you. oh, oh. Okay, yes. <laughs> well, we love Lily Pulitza. On the North Shore, huh? Yeah, I we have one on the North Shore. Yeah. Remember, there uh, was one yeah. in the quarter for a while years ago. Really? No, yes. I didn't know that. Oh yeah, I had a cummerbund and tie set from that. Bill Kearney and myself were featured in the window because of our dates from a uh, sorority at Tulane had their uh, dresses made along with our cummerbund and tie sets to match, and we were in there with our dates and a big photo in, in the French Quarter Very for about 80. a few years. You remember that, Brian? Oh that yeah, that was pretty entertaining. Very entertaining. No oh, names yeah. will be mentioned though. No. All right, so thinking? Peggy. Are you having a big Christmas Eve at your house? And do you cook? <laughs> uh, the scream. Ah, I cannot not take any credit for that. Uh, that's my, my that, thankfully, my dear sister is so generous. She loves to do that. And I am supportive, you know, uh, with <laughs> that, of course. But it's, she has a beautiful home. Uh, and we get to go to her. I, mean, I, I, I feel like I know her house. It's bigger, and uh, and have a really fun time. I have to tell you a tradition though. Does is sure. he will do a twelve days of Christmas, but will link in make up to link in, in something sweet and personal, you know, fun about everybody. So the tradition after we, we you know, in, enjoy a wonderful meal, we sing the twelve, you know, Labor Deegan. And fa all family style <laughs> with, with that, that's fun. Were you, are you, by the chance, I'm just thinking that you weren't related to Janice Deegan, were you? The assessor? Uh, um, my, uh, uh, my, my uh, brother in law cousins. Okay, yes, okay, wow. Well, all right. I mean, Got it. but not close, you know. The sure. Sir, of course. Yeah. No, uh, uh, yes, cousins. Cousins. One, one but, degree of separation I, in New Orleans. And Nancy. Oh, yeah. Huh? There's six people, the yeah, rest so, is done with me. Right. right. But, or attorney. Or, or, or as Tom Fismore calls it, New Orleans incest. <laughs> that too. 500 people in New Orleans. He's yeah. probably right. Oh. Brian, what are you doing on, the, on, on Christmas Eve? I'm coming to your house. Not on Christmas <laughs> Eve. <laughs> oh, we Christmas won't be Eve. here. Christmas yeah, we'll be here, B. He's been drinking vodka this whole time. This is you see him go to his glass. He thought he was going to be with us. No, no I thought you said Christmas. No, I'm going to be at no. your house Christmas Day. Right, but Christmas, but Christmas what do you guys Eve, do? Yeah. Um, well, you know, we traditionally, we go to the, um, Brennan's house and now the Browers uh, for, 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 for a toast and, some and, and, of course, great food. But we go to Commander's after that. Um, me, Tom, and our other partner, Katie, uh, we, uh, we're so exhausted after uh, a retail Christmas that we just, we call it, we're just going to sit and drool in a cup and just have dinner. <laughs> <laughs> and they didn't we're do so it last tired. year. They, they let the employees off last year, right? They did. Christmas. So we went to Clancy's and it was wonderful, but I think right. we're going back. But you went back to Commanders? Yeah. We'll see. You know, it, 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 and Lally Brennan was in the shop today, and she's just so charming and wonderful. And we had some friends. Where, the reason why we got to go to London for this wedding that we were in, because we could never leave this time of year. This is the first time we've ever left the city uh, at this time of year because it's so busy at the shop. Uh, 
Tom, one of Tom's dear friends, Sonia, and her sister came in, stayed at the house, took care of the dog, and worked at the shop for us. Oh, lovely. Uh, Tom, used, Tom used to work with her in New York. She goes, I'm, and she came down at Mother's Day to help, and she, she, she's so charming. So that's how we got to go to go do that. You know, go, go wow. Very nice. Very sweet of her to do so. Very sweet. And she yeah. and then uh, Lally came to me for today to say how wonderful that yes. we sent them the brunch. So go ahead, Peggy. Say, uh, Brian, uh, a PS to the commanders. I had not been to commanders in a while. We're very, very fine with the the wine and cheese, the virtual wine and cheese. Oh, right. Uh, about, but I hadn't been back, you know, since it's right. all, you know, back up. And so I, I have a brother and a sister, and. Don't we all have enough uh, not to take away from your retail stuff, right? So in terms of stuff, we decided we would treat each other to brunch at Sunday Jazz Brunch at Commanders. Oh, yeah. And, I mean, you know, like if, if you're local and if you have, you got to do it. And, of course, there's tea. Tea, it's either tea or lally, bread and presents. Mm -hmm. and, and both of them, of course, do so much for the community. As you well know, really good buds. But tea was there, you know, on, you know, everything. It was, it, it was, the place was service, great food. But, but if you haven't been back to the commanders uh, for the jazz brunch, and you know, those of you all who are interested in culinary history, I mean, that is, that's the, the jazz brunch at commanders by Dick Brennan. And I, because yep. I interviewed him on this. Okay. Um, I think he was in, I think he was in London. It's funny. He was somewhere in Europe. I think he was in London. He was at a, his the hotel they were staying, and they went to a meal at the restaurant. And like all of a sudden, like bells went off. Like wait, wait a minute, I know what I can do. Dick Brennan, we have the the jazz brunch. Oh, well, let me tell you. You know, my, my graduating class from Newman, we had Michael Lewis, Sean Tui, and T as well. In our class, from uh, we only had like seventy people That's in our class. That's illustrious. And and there's a heck wow. of a lot more. I just didn't mention, but you just mentioned tea. And, and they do. just and they just painted a few weeks ago. I don't know if you saw this, but uh, the utility box on the corner of Washington and Britannia is a tribute to Ella and her likeness is oh. on it, you know, and stuff, which is really wonderful. Really wonderful. Oh. We love think that about, place. Uh, think about. You know, a very young Paul Prudhomme, Emerald yep. Lagasse. I mean, it, it, she's good spot talent. She really good. Absolutely. You know. She was so did anybody say hazelnut? Oh, there it is. There's hazelnut. Yep. You know, there's, um, also, there's, um, you know, there's a great documentary uh, about Ella called Commanding the Table that uh, Leslie, Leslie, um, it, it, it was. Just a, it's a great documentary. Yeah, I think it's on Netflix or Amazon. One of them is so. wonderful. You're, yeah. Leslie, I worked. I worked. Uh, directed it. Um, and and that's. It, it, she's she's a uh, Oscar nominated documentarian, and uh, um, she also did the. Uh, she did. Um, God, what was it? It's the uh, the Disney uh, imagination imagination. Um, Documentary too. She's quite fabulous. Ryan, I saw they had the 30th anniversary of uh, Lumiere and that uh, Beauty and the Beast oh. on television, and how you got passed over to not reprise your role was so disappointing. Oh. Well, uh, I, you know, I, I, e I emailed the network yes. and was screaming in in my email. Martin Short did a wonderful job. Uh, he's a wannabe Brian Bat. Ah, well, thank you. <laughs> Tell that to my new agent. <laughs> oh, you got a new agent? I kind of. <laughs> kind of? Yeah. I don't know it's what that is. Story. Okay. I'll tell you on Christmas dinner. All, all right. Good. Okay. It's all good. By the way, Peggy, I cook in my family uh, the entire oh. Christmas. Yes. Thanksgiving, yes. Christmas. Uh, um, uh, mostly every night, too, for oh, that. Oh, okay. Oh. Just to have, I just Maybe love it. On day clean. Yes. yes. I like to I, clean too. Cooks I'll, I'll clean. <laughs> but um, I'm looking forward to the holidays. I can't wait for them to be over. 
what? I, it's exhausting. I'm telling you, I'm on my feet all day, wrapping packages and all that. No, I, I do enjoy it. I, my favorite is Christmas because it's kind of done and you can relax and just be with family. And that I love. It's there's we put this unnecessary pressure on ourselves. I think during the holidays to uh, get the right gift and all that stuff. And 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 really, we I don't really really get to enjoy them until uh, until Christmas Day, and Christmas Eve too. Christmas Eve is great too, because at the uh, store. Brian, I remember when we used to go there ham. six o'clock at night, and uh, closing up. Ben and I would stay late when we had the first store. Right, and, uh, challenging, but keep in mind, as as tough as it may seem on all of us, and as we get a tad bit older, that we're so blessed to have the uh, trappings oh, yes. and all the other things that we have, of our course. health, and the fact we're here doing this right now. You know, yeah. No, it, my favorite thing on Christmas Eve, we close kind of early because you know it. it everyone goes to right. do this, but my thirty is right. Frantic, frantic men coming in trying to find something for their wives that they totally forgot or didn't get. Or, you know, the cute thing is like- And you should charge them triple, by the way, Brian, when that happens. Oh, no, no, no. But my favorite, and then dad's bringing their kids shopping for the mom. It, 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 there are some moments that are- My favorite thing, one little girl said, this is a while, a couple, couple of weeks ago or early on, she kept on bringing these napkins to her mother. And she goes, honey, we don't need napkins. We don't need, we don't need a napkin. She goes, but mommy, there are people in the world that do need napkins and we should get them for them. <laughs> I don't know what that yeah. means, but okay. Yeah, but I thought, okay. That's, That's funny. Yeah. That's funny. Yeah. So Jen, Rock, cousin Jen said, Jay, you make the best ham. Oh, thank you very much. I use my dad's oh, okay. recipe. But listen, oh, thank yeah. you all for being with us this evening. We're about to wrap up. It's been an absolute pleasure to have my brother Brian and Peggy Scott Laborde and everything y'all do for our community is so wonderful i mean we need people like yourself and we're thrilled that y'all are still here staying in new orleans and giving of yourself to the community day in and day out um and i'm looking forward to that new documentary peggy that's going to be oh, fantastic oh thank you thank you and thank you all for asking me to be on i i i so i i i've known you all for many many years and and been with you and sharing memories and it's really an honor and a pleasure once again. Thank you so much. And Brian, of course, thank you for being with us. Do you are you wearing a shirt under your sweater or no? I don't know Somewhere. if that's a Broadway thing. All right, just check. No, it's, there's a t-shirt under there. All right, just it's a brother thing. It's, it's a brother thing, you know, Peggy. It's just, so um, but thank you all both for being here this evening. And Merry Christmas and happy Hanukkah to everybody viewing and any other holiday you celebrate. Yeah, so thank you all. Absolutely. Listen, I really appreciate thank you. Merry Christmas uh, to y'all. Thank you all. Uh, take care, uh, public, and we'll see you in January. We're going to take a little uh, Christmas, ho Christmas holiday, New Year's holiday, and we'll start back in January. Wait, Is one last right thing. I'll, I'll, yes, indeed. One last thing I'll tell everybody. 2.30 on December 30th, uh, running down Decatur, is the Sugar Bowl parade uh, we have. Ooh. We have Kansas State and Alabama in town, and yours truly is the captain of that parade. For the Sugar Bowl committee. Oh, okay. So come on out and say it. For a proper costume. You need a Sugar Bowl hat. That's what my brother's going to make a hat for. <laughs> yeah. You need for a Sugar Bowl okay. hat. Those watching, please go ahead and share. You're not even playing baseball. It's a football game. What do you have a baseball hat on you? You need a Sugar Bowl on your head. Come on. That's why he was Lumiere. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all so much. Love you all. Merry See you all